If you're a customer success manager looking for a better way to organize and manage your work, then this video is for you. Today, I'm going to show you a system that is going to allow you to streamline your workflows and reduce your workload, get on top of your accounts, and even free up time to be more proactive with your customers. I'm sure you might have struggled at some point to stay on top of all of your accounts information and your never ending to do list. And I know it might feel like a chore when your manager asks you for a status update on your book of business and you need to scramble through multiple apps and multiple documents to try and put that information together. That's why I've built a Notion dashboard specifically for CSMs to help you get more organized and be more productive. I've spent the last eight years working in customer success, initially as a CSM myself, and in the last five years as a customer success leader and consultant for tech startups. So I know what you should be tracking and I have a very clear understanding of what a CSM's day-to-day -day looks like. So I've designed this dashboard to help you create a single source of truth and replace tools like Google Drive, Google Docs, spreadsheets, Apple Notes, your handwritten notes and really create a place where you can store information, plan your daily, weekly and monthly activities, track your workload and measure your impact on your customers. If you just want to get a hold of the Notion CSM dashboard, there's a link down below in the description to download it. Now let's dive in and review this system. So we are now in Notion and we're looking at the CSM dashboard. This is an all-in-one dashboard so everything is contained within the same page. So the first thing I would like to do is to give you a quick tour from top to bottom so you can see the different sections that form this dashboard. So starting from the top you can see there's three sections here. On your left hand side you have your navigation, then you have a section in the middle for quick capture and there's a section for items that need review. As we move down in the dashboard you will see that there's a section for targets. Every CSM has some form of KPI that they're measured against and it's extremely important that you keep track of that. You have metrics normally related to revenue retention as well as customer retention or logo retention and some form of customer satisfaction metrics. So this is the section where you'll be able to keep track of your KPIs on a quarterly basis. Next, we have a section for your accounts, and this is probably the most important part of the entire dashboard because it shows you your book of business. As you can see, there are several views of your book of business by stage, by risk, by country, by product, which will come in handy at different times in the customer journey and as you work through your book of business on your day to day. Next, we have two other sections in the dashboard related to projects as well as meetings and tasks. This is also the core of any CSN's day to day. You'll be working on a series of tasks, preparing for meetings, conducting meetings, whether that's internal calls or customer training, conducting EBRs. This is really the bulk of your day to day. Some of these activities are more than a simple task. It may actually form a project, which is a series of tasks which may have several people involved with it. So you may choose to create an actual project for certain activities rather than keeping it as a task. And a project can be related to an account or not. You might be working on projects that are related, for example, to your own personal development or your career development or projects for the benefit of the wider customer success team at your company. Next, we have a section for what I call high value activities. High value activities are not KPIs per se, so your compensation is probably not directly tied to this, but these are activities that you're normally expected to do as a CSM and that add a lot of value for your customers. These activities are normally creating or updating a success plan, discussing this joint success plan with your customer, completing at least one EBR per quarter and trying to obtain a reference or a case study. So the purpose of this section is to facilitate tracking of these high value activities and measure your progress per account. Next, we have a section for product requests. This is also a very big component of a CSM's day to day. You hear a lot of feedback from your customers. Some of that feedback might be related to a bug in the product. 
Other types of feedback might just be a request for a new feature. So it's important to have a location where you're able to track all of these requests in order to identify common trends across your book of business, but also to measure the size of the problem. If it's a bug, for example, or how many customers are requesting a specific feature so that you can pass on this information to your product team. Next, we have a section for your renewals. Even if you're not responsible for renewals at your company because you have an account management team that is responsible for that, the CSM is the one who works with the customer throughout the year to help them drive value from the product so that when renewal comes, it's a no-brainer. So it's very important that you keep track of your upcoming renewals, you're aware of the dates, and that you have a sense for whether or not they will be renewing, churning, or potentially upgrading or downgrading their service. And next we have a section for resources. Think of resources as one big folder where you can keep all sorts of information related to your account, such as their success plan, the deck for their last EBR, a health summary, or even personal notes, such as items that you want to discuss, with your manager in your one-to-one, -one, your career development plan, and so on. And lastly, we have a section for time tracking. Why is time tracking important? Well, you want to understand where you've been spending your time. Obviously, some accounts will be more demanding than others, either because they're at risk or because they have more engaged stakeholders, but you want to try and balance that out. So you'll want to understand where you're spending your time per account, but also by activity type. You will want to understand whether you're spending most of your time in internal meetings or conducting training for customers, conducting EBRs, and so on. This is also extremely helpful for your manager to help them understand whether you are at capacity and have too much on your hands and potentially need to hand over some of your accounts to another CSM, or whether you actually don't have enough in your hands and you're potentially bored and you could actually take up additional customers. Now that we know what's the different sections that form part of our CSM dashboard, let's head up back to the top so we can start talking through how to use it on a day to day and what's the ideal workflows to use the CSM dashboard. In this video, we're not covering how to add your own data to the CSM dashboard, but I do want to mention that there's a whole section dedicated on how to use this dashboard that tells you exactly how to input your own data and how to use the dashboard on your day to day. So rest assured that there's a lot of guidance contained in here to help you get started and it's really straightforward. But the focus for today is really about how to use the CSM dashboard on your day to day. So let's head back. Now, as you can see here at the top, the first thing you see is a navigation pane. The reason for that is obviously it's a fairly lengthy CSM dashboard. So it's always handy to be able to quickly get to the section that you want to without having to scroll too much. The other reason for it is if you're, for example, on the road, it is very common that as a CSM, you will be out of the office and meeting customers at their offices. So if you need to access some information very quickly from your dashboard, it's much easier to do it on your mobile. So the navigation is the first thing you would see on the Notion mobile app, making it very easy to get to the section that you need to. And that's the same reason why the quick capture section comes next. So it's the second thing you see in your dashboard, which allows you to take any thoughts from your head and put them down to paper or to your digital paper. So if you have an idea for a new task or a new project, you can quickly use these buttons to create a new task where all you have to do is give a title to your task. So let's call it today's task. And that's it. You can go on, continue with your day and not worry about forgetting about that task. Again, if you're on your mobile, the quick capture section will be shown right underneath the navigation menu so you can easily capture your thoughts on the go. And this takes us to our third section, which is the needs review section. This is basically where you'll be able to see the items that you've quickly captured, but have not added all the information that is needed. So there are multiple tabs contained in here. You have a section for your meetings and tasks. You have a view for your projects. You have a view for accounts as well as a view for product requests and resources that you've quickly captured and need to add additional information. So if you go back to our meetings and tasks, you can see that today's task 
is now showing in here. And when you have the time, and my recommendation is that you do this once a day, because probably you would have captured several thoughts throughout the day. So take some time either at the beginning of the end of the day to review these items and go through it one by one. Open your today's tasks. Make sure you assign an account. If this is a task associated with an account, assign the participants if this is a meeting and add a time frame to complete your task or meeting and update its schedule. So if it's now been scheduled, you can move it from to be scheduled into scheduled. And that's it. And you would go around and complete the same process for your other tasks. And the way that this task will disappear from this needs review section and show up in your calendar that we've seen previously is further down below is by adding a time frame. So when I add a starting and end date and I include the time, let's make this one 11 p.m., you will see that this task will now disappear from our needs review section. Now let's move on to our targets section. This is something you probably would have set up when you first added your data to this dashboard, but this is something you also will need to review on a regular basis. My recommendation is that you review your progress against your targets on a weekly basis. So set some time, perhaps on a Friday afternoon when you're doing admin work to actually keep track of your progress against your quarters. And the way that you would do that is simply by clicking on each of your target cards and update your current value information. So this target system works very similarly to objectives and key results. If you're familiar with the OKR framework, whereby you have previously set a starting value for this particular KPI, as well as a target value. And throughout the quarter, you will come in here and update the current values. For example, we could put 104 and you will see the progress bar automatically updating. If you wanted to see your performance in previous quarters, there's a tab for that as well. So you can keep track of your performance. The this quarter tab is actually filtered based on the date that you've inputted in the time frame. Now let's move on to the accounts sections. The first view is a gallery view. This is a very simple and aesthetic way of viewing some cards for your accounts. And you can actually change the covers if you wanted to, to make it more visually appealing and personalized to your own tastes. The next tab is showing your accounts by stage in the customer journey. So this shows you whether your account is in onboarding, in adoption, in expansion, or in a renewal phase. And you will see a sum of the ARR that is contained within each of these phases. By risk, it's fairly self-explanatory. It shows you your accounts grouped by the risk level, which you would have defined as you work with your customers. So it ranges from low risk to medium and high risk. And you can also determine whether you think they're likely to renew, likely to downgrade, likely to churn or likely to expand. By country shows you a view of your accounts grouped by their headquarters. And this will be really helpful, for example, if you're planning a trip and you wanna make sure that you will visit all of your customers in that country, you could come and check in here that, for example, you have two customers in France, you wanna make sure you will be scheduling meetings with both of them. You also have a view by product, and I find this view particularly helpful if you need to find a customer to serve as a reference for a prospect. So it's very common that your sales counterparts will be working on prospects that want to speak to existing customers. So this will make it easy for you to identify the right fit customers. For example, if the sales rep is looking for a current customer to speak to a prospect about product two, and for a customer in a mid-market segment, you potentially don't have a right fit because even though you have a customer that meets the criteria, they're currently at risk. So they might not be prone to give a very positive review. Next, you also have a section showing you your churned customers. Hopefully this will remain empty and there will never be any customers in here. But if unfortunately some customers decide to churn, you can mark them as such. And in this view, you'll be able to see the reason why they churned, the date when they're churned and the amount of revenue that was lost. 
There is one more view for your account section, which is a table view. And this is particularly helpful if you need to make bulk edits. I always find it easier to edit things in mass when I have a simple table view. And also because you can multi-select items or several pages in your database and change all at once. For example, your headquarters, your regions, your products, and a series of other items contained within this property. Now, if we head back into our gallery view, I now want to show you what's actually contained within each of the accounts pages. So let's click on account seven, for example, and open it up as a full page. This is where you will find everything you need to know about your account. There's a series of properties shown here at the top, which you obviously are responsible for keeping up to date, containing information about the account, country and region, their segment, their ARR, contract start dates and end dates. There's a formula calculating the contract duration based on the contract start and end date. It shows you billing terms, the stage that they're at, their expected go live date, their risk level, what they're likely to do, as well as information about who's the account executive on the account, who's the onboarding specialist, and if the account were to churn, this is where you can input information about the churn date and the churn reason. Now within the page itself, you will see a series of linked views of the databases we've seen in the main dashboard. So you have a section for account resources that is filtered for this particular account. So any information that you added to your resources folder that is associated with this account will be shown in here. And you have a view for your frequent resources and a view for all the resources associated with this account. On your right hand side, you have a quick overview of the products that this account is using. And down below, you have a section for the projects, meetings and tasks that are associated with this account. I've mentioned that projects are different from tasks in the sense that a project is something with a longer time frame that may contain or should contain more than just one task. And it's something you want to track on its own. However, this is entirely optional. You do not have to use this project section to keep track of progress or keep track of time that you've spent on a specific account, but I do find it particularly helpful. For example, I would like to know how long it takes me to put together an EBR for an account. So I would create a project for that. If you click on the card, what you will see inside it is all the meetings and tasks that are related with this project. That's why I find creating projects really, really helpful so that the tasks associated with it don't get lost with your other meetings and activities with your account. If we head back to the account page, down below is where you will see all of your to do's associated with this account. You have four different views here. The first one is your weekly view, which shows you what you have scheduled for this week with this account. You can also schedule new meetings directly from the calendar by clicking on the plus sign and just adding a new activity. If we head back, you will see that there's a monthly view as well. So if you needed to plan in a longer time horizon, for example, if you're trying to see when was your last weekly check in before you schedule your next one, this monthly view can be quite helpful. The next tab is for overdue tasks. So any tasks that have a date in the past and that the status is not complete will show in here so that you can either mark them as complete if you have effectively done the task or so that you can reschedule them for a date in the future. And the last tab within the meetings and tasks is an all to do section, which shows you all the tasks that have not been completed yet and that have a time frame in the future. Next, we have a section for your contacts. One of the biggest responsibilities in a CSM role is to manage relationships. So understanding who the key stakeholders are within a customer organization is very important. So this is the place where you'll be able to keep track of all of your contacts as well as assign them to a persona and determine whether they're the economic buyer, executive sponsor, or the end user, as well as determine the degree of influence that this individual has and the strength of the relationship that you have with them. So there's three more views within this contacts view. In addition to all contacts, you also have a view by persona. This helps you understand whether you have access to the economic buyer, which you absolutely should always have. 
You also have a view by relationship that shows you what's the strength of the existing relationships that you have. So anyone with a weak relationship, you want to make sure that you will be spending more time with developing that relationship. So when the time comes and you need that person's agreement to renew a contract, for example, you will be able to exert some influence because you have a strong relationship. Lastly, you have by influence, which shows you how powerful or how influential that individual is within their own organization. Next, we have a section for your product request. So this is very similar to what you have in your dashboard consolidated view, except that these product requests are solely for this account. We have a view for open requests by priority and you have a view for open requests by status a tab for closed requests as well. And this is really handy, for example, when you're putting together an EBR and you want to look back at the past quarter and see how many issues or how many features were developed that had been asked by this specific customer. This is really handy to come in here and have a look at that. And there's one more view, which is for all requests. If you just wanted to see a consolidated view of everything that this specific customer has shared with you. And that's it in terms of the account page. It really shows you everything that you need to know about that one customer within the same page. So if we head back to the top, we can actually now go back to our main page, which is the CSM dashboard and move on and for example, work on your next account, open your next page. If you want to see all of your open projects, tasks and meetings, you would move on to the next section. So this functions in exactly in the same way as you saw it inside the accounts page. You have an overview of all of your active projects, all of your planned projects and all of your completed projects, not for a specific account, but for your entire book of business. It's the same concept for meetings and tasks. You have a weekly view, a monthly view, a list of overdue tasks and activities and a list of all your to-dos across all of your accounts. So it's really up to you to choose how you prefer to work. Some people prefer this list-based view where you can see everything that you have coming up. Personally, I like to work with the weekly view because it functions like a calendar where I can see all of my tasks coming up for the day and it makes it really easy to reschedule things as well. You can just grab a card and drop it on another day if you need to reschedule it. When it comes to our high value activities, this is probably not something you will use every day. It's something that you will come to when you've completed that activity for a particular account. So if you just held a discussion with your customer and you've discussed the joint success plan, then you would come in here and tick that box. So let's say we just had that meeting with account number two, I would come in here and tick the box for the success plan discussed. And we can see that the progress of the high value activities for account number two is now at 75% instead of 50%. One thing I do want to call out is because these are quarterly activities, you have a button here to reset them. So what this button does is to remove all the checkboxes in this high value activities database. So you can start fresh when a new quarter starts. And don't worry if you accidentally click the button, you will actually first see a pop up message warning you that you should only do this when you're starting a new quarter. But if you are effectively doing that, you can just go ahead and click yes and you will see that the checkboxes are reset, the progress is reset, and you're ready to start your new quarter. The next section is your product request. So similarly to what we saw in the accounts page, you have a view for open requests by priority, open requests by status, but there's a different view contained in here, which is called product requests by impact. And this allows you to visualize how many accounts and how much ARR is being impacted by any one particular issue. So if, for example, if we look here at issue number one, we can see that there's two accounts that are being impacted by it amounting to 200,000 ARR impacted. So this is particularly helpful to help prioritize issues with your product team. This view allows you to show your product managers and your engineering teams that 
there's the same issue impacting multiple accounts, which should help them determine the priority of the item. Down below, we have a sections for renewals, also something you're probably not going to look at every day, but you may have times of the year where you have a lot of renewals at the same time. So it's important that you review this renewal section at least once every two weeks would be my recommendation. So you can keep track of upcoming renewals and make sure you update the likely to property. So if something has changed in your interactions with this customer and you now feel like they're going to potentially churn because there's some risk to the account, you can just quickly update the status so you know where these accounts stand and what you need to prioritize. Next, we have our resources section. Again, I imagine that you would access your resources primarily from your account page for that particular account. But if you wanted to see an aggregate view of all your resources, particularly resources that you access on a frequent basis, this is the best place to come to. The next tab is for account resources. So you see all the resources for all your accounts. And the last tab is for your personal resources, which you can see in an aggregate view. This might contain stuff like we mentioned earlier, templates for EBRs or templates for a success plan. It can contain your career development plan, notes for your one-on-one -on -one with your manager and so on. Lastly, you have your time tracker section, which is not something you need to actively input information. All of the time tracking is done automatically based on the time frames that you input into your activities, your meetings, your tasks. This just shows you an aggregate view of the time you spend on a specific project, on a specific account, or on a specific activity type for this particular quarter. As mentioned earlier, this can be very helpful to help you understand if you're focusing your time on the right things. You might be spending, for example, too much time on checking calls or too much time on internal calls when you should be spending most of that time customer facing, doing EBRs, doing on-site visits and so on. It also helps you view how you're spending or distributing your time for the different accounts. You can see, for example, there's a lot of time spent here with account number one, eight and a half hours, whereas you've only spent half an hour with account number 10. So this can help you balance your efforts and distribute your time amongst your different customers in your book of business. And lastly, you have your view per project, which again, as we mentioned earlier, can also help your manager understand what are the big ticket items that you're working on? How are you adding value to the team? How much time you're spending on it? How's your workload? Do you need more accounts or do you need less accounts? And that is all for today. So if you want to grab the Notion CSM dashboard, there's a link down below in the description. If you need help to create a customized Notion template or to even build your entire Notion workspace, please do get in touch with me. There's a link down below with my contact details as well. I hope you found this video helpful and if so, please give it a like and subscribe to the channel for more customer success, productivity and Notion insights.